In this episode, we're gonna be working on another portrait using an airbrush and acrylic paint. This is the completed painting. If you wanna follow along with this one, I recommend taking a screenshot of this at full screen, printing it out, and setting up a grid on it to draw. I'm using Createx Illustration Colors, which are an acrylic paint made for airbrushing. The nice thing about them is you can soft erase the paint once it's dry. So for this basic flesh tone, what I'm using is 10 drops red violet, five drops burnt umber, three drops of sepia, and one drop of moss green. This color mixture is gonna be 100% transparent. There's no white in it to offer any sort of opacity. So just keep that in mind. When you wanna spray a dark color, you're gonna spray more paint. When you want it lighter, you're just gonna to have to spray less. So it's really about the control of the airbrush that's gonna control the values, the dark and the light. On any sort of portrait, I generally like starting with the eyes. So we're gonna start with the left eye here. In this painting, the woman's smiling, almost like she's laughing. When we laugh, generally our eyes close and our eyebrows raise up, so we wanna to try to capture that in this painting. Using that color that we mixed in the beginning, I'm gonna start laying out the basic forms in the eye. Remember that this color is transparent, so if I wanna go a little bit darker, like I'm doing right here where the eyelashes are, I need to spray a little bit more. A good thing to do with an airbrush is always spray as light as you can and build the values up slowly. It's nice to maybe let it dry for a few minutes before you put on a second layer because if you add too much it's gonna run or if you're using a shield if you have too much paint it could run underneath the shield and it gets messy so try to go slow with it throughout this portrait you're gonna see I'm gonna be switching between using a shield which is a mask and using some freehand techniques like I'm doing right here for the eyebrow so once I have some basic color down here for the eyebrow, I'm gonna use an X-Acto blade and scratch out some of the paint. This is gonna give me some flyaway hairs and some texture to it to make it look a little bit more like an eyebrow rather than just a curved shape. When you're pulling out highlights and hair, you don't have to worry too much about trying to get it perfect. You could see here, this eyebrow is a little too light, but that's okay, because I know that I'm gonna add more layers with more paint. So as I continue along in the painting, it's gonna get darker and that texture underneath will add to some of the texture that you see in the final painting. Looking at my painting here, I noticed that I'm gonna need a few lines a little bit sharper. So what I'm gonna do is use a shield. This shield here is a French curve made out of mylar. And these are amazing for getting subtle curves. When you put them in, you don't wanna to spray too much paint. You just wanna spray a little bit and back away and look at it. Because if you spray too much, you're gonna get a very sharp line and it's not gonna look natural. To add highlights, what I'm doing here is I'm removing paint using a sand eraser, or it's also called an ink eraser made by Faber-Castell. Now, this one's very aggressive and removes paint quite easily as long as the canvas is very smooth. Any area that I want a little bit lighter, I just draw over it and it's gonna pull out a little bit of paint. The harder I press, the more paint it's gonna remove and the lighter it's gonna be. If you're trying this technique yourself, make sure that you're using an ink eraser like this Faber-Castell. Stadler also makes one, but if you use a normal pencil eraser or a graphite eraser, it won't remove the paint. It's not aggressive enough. So make sure you get one of these. If you look online, they're usually called typewriter erasers or ink erasers. Sometimes they're also marketed as sand erasers, but you wanna make sure you get one that's aggressive so it removes the paint. Okay, so this is about good enough for the eye for now. So what I wanna do is start spraying down some flesh tones. Like I said before, going slow is the most important thing. With this little crease here, I'm gonna use a French curve, a slightly larger one, and spray a very thin line just so I have that shape marked in. As I spray over the rest of the face, it's gonna darken that, so I don't need to go too dark with that first line. When I lay down the first value, I'm holding the airbrush about five to six inches away from the canvas and spraying very lightly to build the colors up gradually. I want this to be soft, but I don't want it to look blurry. So what I'm gonna do is put this base layer down very thinly, and then I'm eventually gonna come in with an eraser to add some texture to the skin. I've been oil painting for many years before I started using an airbrush, and one of the big mistakes I made in the beginning was spraying too much paint. I would lay down a very thick layer of paint, and then for my brighter areas, I would lay lighter colors on top of it, and it gets very messy. You wanna to try to go as light as you can, and then for those highlights, don't switch to a lighter paint. Use an eraser like I'm doing here and erase the highlight out. That's gonna give a lighter value of the same color and it's gonna look more natural. When you spray a lighter opaque color over another color, it's gonna shift it blue. It's a strange phenomenon that basically happens in airbrushing. So you wanna do the best you can to spray lightly and then use an eraser to pull out highlights. Once that's done, you can come back in with your airbrush and spray another layer over it. And that's gonna help soften everything out and kind of even the values out. 
if I was using oil paint for this portrait, there'd be a lot more paint on the surface. But for an airbrush, the less you use, the better result you're gonna get. When I want a line sharper or more defined, I'm gonna use a shield like this French curve. And I'm just gonna spray the thinnest amount and then I'm gonna back up and look at it. It's really easy to spray too much when you're using a shield and you're gonna get a very sharp line. So again, sticking with that theme, the less paint you use here, the better results you're gonna get. The values could always be built up. When they're laid down too thick, it's, it's so tough to remove and you're kind of stuck with what you have. On the ear, you could see that I have some of the contours already laid down with graphite. So I'm using my shield to define some sharp lines underneath the ear. Once those lines are down, I'm gonna spray over the top of it, and that's gonna help smooth it out a little bit more so the line's not too harsh. Sometimes if the line is too sharp, it's gonna look cartoony and it's gonna look very flat. So a small amount of paint just to get the line established is the first step, and then you can always blend it over by spraying a little bit of paint on top of it or coming in with an eraser to soften it up. So as I work on the forehead, I know that the light is coming from left to right, so I wanna make the right side of the forehead a little bit darker and the left side a little bit brighter to look like the light is shining off of it. Building the paint up slowly across the whole forehead and then adding a little bit more on the right side just to darken it up and give it that rounded appearance. Moving over to the right eye, I'm going to use my shield to establish a few of the lines, basically the contours of the side of the portrait around the eye. Once the contour lines are in and dark enough, I'm going to start working on the eye itself. Now this eye is closed, so I'm going to just freehand paint these in. This way it's going to make it a little bit softer and it's not going to be too sharp. There's a balance in any painting between sharp lines and soft lines. I think it's all subjective and it's really up to what you want in the painting. For me personally, this portrait is part of a larger painting that has multiple figures in it and this woman's in the back of the painting. So she's not gonna have too much focus on her. She's gonna be a little bit softer. The figures toward the foreground, which is closest to the viewer, are gonna be a little bit sharper and have more detail on them. This way you kinda get a bit of a lens effect where subjects that are in focus are sharper and the ones that are farther away are gonna be slightly out of focus. This flesh tone is a little bit too light for the dark shadows within the eyes. So I use some pure sepia diluted with a little bit of water to spray inside the eyes and around where the eyelashes are just to darken a little bit more than what the flesh tone was giving me. So now that I have that eye in, I wanna darken this area a little bit more. And this is one of my favorite things about using an airbrush is that I'm gonna take my flesh tone and glaze a very thin layer of paint over the top of it. What's gonna happen is it's gonna darken this area and I'm not gonna lose any of my detail inside that I already painted. You can see I'm spraying a little bit more up on the forehead um, as well. And that's gonna give the that transition from shadow moving over to light over to the left side of the forehead. Next up, moving down to the nose. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize for this part of the video. I forgot to turn on my video lights and I had the studio lights on. So you're going to see some banding and a little bit of a, a darker view here. So my apologies for that. But anyway, I'm switching between freehand painting and using a shield. So the first part with the nostril and the side of the nose, I want to use a shield to define some sharper lines. Once I have these lines in and defined, I could switch to freehand painting and I can add my values where I need to. So on the left side of the nose, it's gonna be a little bit darker because that part is in the shadow. And I could spray over toward the middle where it's gonna be a little bit lighter. And I'm gonna use less paint. And when you spray like this, your lines and your values are gonna be very, very soft, but that's okay. If I want some more texture, I can spray lightly and use my eraser to use small circular motions and pull out some highlights. And that's gonna give some more of a, a skin texture. But for the nose here, I'm gonna keep this pretty smooth and pretty soft, just spraying lightly and getting my shapes in slowly. You don't always need to go overboard with texture. Sometimes subtlety helps the image a little bit more. And you can see here on the nose, I did just that. I, I didn't use a eraser at all for any texture. I used a little bit in the beginning to clean up some of the edges, but that gave me a soft nose and it works just fine. So I'm gonna leave it and move on to the next part. For the right side of this face, I want a sharper line and it's gonna be tricky to use a shield. So what I'm using here is some 3M vinyl tape and I'm placing this around the contour, meaning around the outline of the portrait. Then I'm gonna use some masking tape to cover the side of it. So when I spray it, paint doesn't get 
around the, the outside of the tape. So for this side of the face, just like the other side, I want to go slowly, starting right underneath the eye and working my way down, working to this area underneath the nose and putting in a very light dusting of paint and then stopping and looking at it and then seeing what I need to adjust, if I need to go darker or if I need to add some texture. So far it seems to be going just fine, so I'm gonna continue along. Again, I can't stress this enough, go lightly and build your values up slowly. It looks like I'm going really fast here because this is sped up, but believe me, I'm going very slow and I'm constantly stopping to look at it and deciding where I'm gonna go from there. So when I stop back and look at this, I notice that I feel like the nose needs a little bit more texture. So I'm switching over to my eraser. This is the Faber-Castell, which is an ink eraser. And with small circular motions, I'm just going around the nose and a few of the other areas just to pull out some very subtle soft highlights and this is going to give some texture to some areas and it's going to draw the eye to it and it's going to look like it's a little bit more in focus and the areas that don't have texture are going to look softer and farther away. As we move along to the next part of the portrait which is the mouth I want to talk about color. Color is obviously a very important part of painting. So what I like to do is I like to simplify everything. When I'm painting the lips I almost always use the exact same flesh tone that I use for the portrait. So you can see on this one, I'm using the exact same color and it looks fine. Generally, lips are gonna be a little bit warmer than anything else. They're gonna be reddish or pinkish. So what I do is I'll spray lightly with my flesh tone and paint the lips with that basic color, see what it looks like. And if I wanna shift it, then I could use a pure red over the top and lightly dust that over to shift the, the lip color so that it's a little bit warmer. On this one though, it looks fine with the flesh tone, so I'm gonna leave it like this and I'll decide if I wanna change it later down the road. As we move down to the teeth, I'm using the exact same flesh tone that we use across the whole portrait, and I'm very subtly adding in some of the lines where the gums are and the lines between the teeth. What I do is I place my shield down and spray a tiny bit. You wanna keep these lines as soft as possible. If you have dark lines between the teeth, they're gonna look rotten, it's gonna look ugly, it's not gonna be a good look for the painting. So you wanna keep them soft. If you spray them a little bit too dark, like you'll see I do in some areas, I come in with my eraser and I clean them up. While working on the teeth, a good thing to think about is to try to paint an impression of the teeth. So you're not going in there and trying to paint every little bit of detail. You're trying to keep everything soft and subdued. And when you look back from a distance, it'll look like teeth, some of the lines and some of the shapes, your brain's gonna fill that in when you look at it, so you don't have to go in and paint every single part. It's gonna make it easier, and I promise you it's gonna look better as an end result. A great example of this is the right side of the teeth right now. As you can see, I don't have any of them painted in, but if you squint your eyes or you look at it from a distance, your brain kind of fills in the gaps where the teeth are. So trust me on this, keep it as simple as possible, and you'll be just fine. The last part of the portrait here is the chin and the lower right side of this cheek. So the first thing I want to do is define some of these edges and then I'll come in and freehand paint. So I take my shield and I place it right on the edge just like before and I spray the tiniest bit of paint. This is going to give me a nice sharp line. With those lines in, I'm gonna to switch to freehand painting. Now, as you can see, I hold my airbrush from right to left. This way I'm spraying in that direction. So any overspray from the airbrush is gonna go onto an area that I'm gonna paint later on. It's gonna probably get onto the neck and onto the hair area, and that's not gonna affect the painting much. If it's an area that I don't want any paint, I'm gonna to have to mask it off, like the right side of the painting where you see it's white and clean. To finish this part up, just like before, I'm switching over to the eraser to pull out some highlights and to add some skin texture. If you're gonna use this technique and erase paint from canvas, you're gonna need three things. One is a very smooth canvas, and I'll have a link in the video description on a video I made showing you how to set that up. It's nice and simple. The second thing you're gonna need is a paint that's erasable. So the Createx illustration line and also ComArt paint by Iwata that um, erases just as well. And the last thing you need is an aggressive eraser like the one I showed in the beginning of the video. A normal pencil eraser won't be able to do it. I'm gonna stop here because I think we covered the majority of the portrait and the important parts of the face. If you're working on this one and you have any problems or questions, just leave me a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you and try to help you out. 
I hope you picked up a few tips or learned something in this one. Be patient with yourself and don't worry about making mistakes because like I've said in my other videos, making mistakes is just part of art. I'll have a new video up early next week, so make sure you come back to check that one out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.